Hello, my name is Magnus Petersen. In this video, I'm going to show you how to run my TensorFlow tutorials in the cloud using something called Google Colab, which is a free cloud service that even allows you to run it on a GPU. This is not as good as running it on your own powerful computer. It is slower and it is more unreliable and it sometimes crashes and you have to restart it. But this is a great way for you to begin using TensorFlow and see if TensorFlow is something you want to use and learn more about. Because you don't have to install anything. You just have to press a few buttons. So first you log into your Google account and then you click one of the links below this video. This is for the first tutorial here. And you can see this has been loaded from GitHub. So it always uses the most recent version in my GitHub repository. And before we run it, we will just clear all of the old output so that we can see what has been generated this time. So we click edit, clear all outputs. Then we go to runtime, change runtime type, make sure that it says Python 3 and hardware accelerator. You can set this to GPU. Sometimes this is unstable and you can run it without this instead, but it will be a lot slower. And then you click save and now you're ready to run and you go up, click runtime again and say run all. And then we get this warning. This notebook was not authored by Google. This notebook is being loaded from GitHub. It may request access to your data stored with Google, such as files, emails, and contacts. Please review the source code before executing code in this notebook. I have actually written a number of suggestions to Google that they should improve this Google Colab. And this is one of the things I wrote that they should lock it down so that the notebook cannot access private information like this. Now, I don't give a damn what you have in your emails and your files and whatever. These notebooks are only for TensorFlow, so there's no harmful code in them, but it is your own risk if they wipe everything on your emails or whatever. They shouldn't do that, but it's your risk. And like I said, Google should sort of lock it down so that this cannot happen. I don't know why they allow you to do everything here. Anyway, I'm going to click run anyway, because I know that this should be safe, this code that I have made here. So now it should run and you see this icon up here. And you can see here that it has downloaded a data set to like a temporary folder. It's not entirely clear where it stores this, but it's somewhere on the Google server. But I think when you end this session that everything gets deleted again. So if you come back tomorrow, it will download this automatically again. And for this tutorial, it's a tiny data set, so it's all right. But I have another tutorial which uses a data set that is 19 gigabytes that will be automatically downloaded. So that's a bad idea to run that on Google Colab. So anyway, we browse down and you should, of course, watch the video on this tutorial before you start working on the notebook. So I am going to assume that you know what I'm talking about now. So if we scroll down to after the optimization has been done here, we have done 10 iterations. Then we have a 77% accuracy on the test set. And these are the weights that we have trained in our model. And we can run another thousand iterations and then we get a higher classification accuracy and so on. So this is a very simple tutorial and it works well on Google Colab. No problem here. So let's go to the next tutorial, number two. And again, I recommend that a beginner starts with tutorial one, two and three C. If you do that and you try to make the exercises, for example, in Google Colab, then you will have a very good understanding of what TensorFlow is and how to use it. And then you can continue your education or your research after that. So, okay, now we have open tutorial number two. And again, this link up here is posted below the video. So you either just click it or copy and paste it. So we go to edit and clear all outputs. So all of the old output that has been saved inside the notebook is cleared out. Then we go to runtime, change runtime type, hardware accelerator, GPU, save, runtime, run all. And then we get this warning again, and I just say run anyway. And if you have used Jupyter Notebook, you will notice that the menus here in Colab are different. And this is another thing I wrote them about that I think that these should be the same as Jupyter because Jupyters are more common. People are used to them. But anyway, the Google developers haven't changed that. So let's scroll down again. And here we download and extract the data set again. But because we already have downloaded this data set into our temporary folder here on Colab, it doesn't have to download it again. But for some reason, it extracts us again. I don't know. So let's scroll further down so we can look at the performance after 100 optimization iterations. And we get a classification accuracy of about 70%. And let's look at after a thousand iterations, we get a classification accuracy of about 94%. 
and after 10,000 optimization iterations, it is almost 99%. And this would actually have taken a lot longer if it was running on a CPU instead of a GPU. And if you want to run it for 10,000 iterations more, we can do it like this. So we add another line of code, and then we say 10,000 iterations, and then we press Shift Enter, or you could press this play button here, but Shift Enter is the shortcut, so it runs it, boom. And then it goes, and you can see this is quite fast because it's running on a GPU in the cloud. So that's pretty cool. Now I'm gonna stop this, so I'm gonna interrupt it, and then we get a long error message. But I want to move on to the next tutorial, number 3C on Keras. And this is the API that I recommend that you use for using TensorFlow. So don't program directly in TensorFlow if you can avoid it. You should use Keras. It is a million times easier. Keras is not perfect, but it's a lot better than the native TensorFlow API. So as usual, we're gonna click Edit, Clear all outputs, so all the old outputs are removed. Runtime, change runtime type, Python 3 with the GPU, save. Runtime again, run all. And then it says allocating over here. This is like a status message, connecting. Initializing, connected. Run anyway. And now hopefully it is running. Let's go down and have a look. Yes, TensorFlow, Keras. Load the data. So what happened here was that the runtime died and there's no error message. So we don't know what happened. And this is what I mentioned that sometimes Google Colab is unstable, especially when you run it on the GPU. So we're gonna change the runtime type back to the CPU and save it. And we're gonna clear all output and we're gonna say run all. So now it's running on a CPU. So this is gonna be a lot slower, but hopefully it's a lot more stable. Yeah, so now it's working, and we see that one epoch of training should take about one minute. So we can just wait for it to finish. Are you Finnish? No, I am Danish. <laughs> Are you done? No, I am a Dane. <laughs> okay, so now it's finished, and we can scroll down a bit further, and we can use the trained model to do prediction on some other images, and we can plot them here. And we see that in these cases, it has predicted the correct numbers. Now, once again, these three tutorials are the ones that I think a beginner should watch the videos for and try and do all the exercises for, or as many as you can do, because then you will have a good understanding of what TensorFlow is and how to use it. But I have made a whole series of tutorials. And if you go to my GitHub page, this link here, and this is also written below this video, then you get a whole list of all of the tutorials that I have made. And if you want to run one one of these in Google Colab, what you have to do is you have to take the name of the Python notebook and copy that into the Google Colab URL or web address. Now, I haven't tested all of these. For example, Style Transfer, I did test, but it's downloading a model that is over 500 megabytes, so that takes a while. And when it was done, it actually didn't work. It couldn't run on Google Colab. So some of these may work, some of them may not. One of them that did work was this one down here on time series prediction. So let's try and copy that, control C, and then let's go over here, and then we take the last part here and replace it with this one. And we press enter, and then it's loaded. So we do the same as we normally do, clear all outputs, runtime, change runtime type, Python 3 with the GPU, let's see if it works, run all, Initializing, run anyway, connected. Now it should be running. If we scroll down, we see it has imported all the stuff that we're gonna need. TensorFlow version, Keras. Ah, here we have a problem, import weather. That is because weather is a Python module that is in the GitHub repository. So let's go over here and have a look. You see that file is down here. So what we have to do is we have to clone this GitHub repository into our temporary workspace on Google Colab. And below the video, you will find this text as well. So we scroll down and we take these command lines here. We copy them, control C. We go over to Google Colab. We go up to the top. We add a line of code. We paste the code that we just copied, control V. We press shift enter to run it and it clones it. And once again, when you log out of your Google account, then this gets deleted. So you have to run this every time you want to run this notebook. 
Now let's go back to the text that is written under the video. If there are missing Python packages, then you may also have to run this command here, but you do the same, you press Ctrl C, you go back to Google Colab, you add a line of code, you press Ctrl V, and then Shift Enter. Now we don't need Pretty Tensor in this tutorial here, but you do need that for some of the other tutorials and maybe you need other packages and then you would install it the same way. But let's do it so you can see how it works. So shift enter and then it installed it. So now we could go through and run all of the cells in the notebook one by one. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to go up here and say run all. That means it's going to run the cells that we just added as well, but that shouldn't hurt anything. And then we can go down and now we can import weather and it will automatically download a data set that is about 35 megabytes and it has already done that before I could scroll down and now it's running to resample this data. On my computer this takes 30 seconds but it might take a little longer here and sometimes you get this error here if, especially if you have had more notebooks running and it says that we're close to the memory limit and it wants to close some of our other notebooks so we do that here terminate the other run times that's fine. Let's close them down here as well boom boom and then we go down to the training and sometimes it takes a while for this to start up. And when that happens, you may wonder, is it crashing or what is happening? I think it's because it has to start up a GPU instance. And when you're not using the GPU, it sort of closes it down and then it starts it up again so that they don't reserve an entire GPU for you all the time if you're not using it. But again, sometimes it does crash and then you have to restart the notebook. But now it looks like it's working, so it's training. It is better to run this on your own computer. I have a laptop with a GTX 1070 and that is actually twice as fast as the GPU that they have here on Google Colab. But if you don't have that, then this is a great place to start and try TensorFlow out, even with all the problems that you might have with crashes and so on. Now I should say that I don't use Google Colab myself. So if you have a problem, you can also go up here on help, frequently ask questions, report a bug, ask a question on Stack Overflow or send feedback and you might be able to get help here. So I hope this is going to help you learn TensorFlow and I wish you all the best.